Jumping from Formula Fords to V8 supercars is a daunting proposition for even the most talented rookie drivers. But Fujitsu Series newcomers Chaz Mostert and Miles Racing teammate Ashley Walsh have called in a famous face to get them up to speed. Glenn Seaton has come on board as a mentor to the Formula Ford graduates. Well, if you look at the Fujitsu Series now, this quite good competition when you look at Triple Eight have got a car in here, HRT with Nick Percat and then you've got the Stone Brothers with uh, McLaughlin and things like that so they're up with, against pretty tough competition and they're going to circuits, sure they've been there in Formula Fords but they've never been there in a V8 supercar which is quite different, quite daunting for those kids. His first words of wisdom were blunt. Basically, I think we came in and said, uh, you know, everything that you learn in the Formula Ford, forget it. This is how you're going to drive it. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a very different beast. Seaton has not only enjoyed a successful driving career, but as a former team owner, has the technical smarts to guide the rookies. The biggest help to me is when you go, like, say, to all these tracks in a supercar, obviously the braking zone is different to Formula Ford and changing gears and all that kind of stuff. So. He basically takes us to a walk around track and shows us what we kind of got to do and what like he's done before and it just really helps us get on the, like, the money a lot quicker. You know, he tells us, you know, how to trail brake into the corner, you know, how you pick up the throttle, just, just little things like that, you know, how much speed turn eight, for example, you know, how you brake into there, you know, your braking traces, just, uh, oh, I guess all your standard sort of stuff, but specific to the V8 supercar. They've had most of these kids have come through carts and started at the ages of seven. So they've been racing a long while and uh, this is their opportunity to try and make themselves professional racing drivers because to do that in this country, you basically got to be part of the main game and uh, this, is, this is their goal. Uh, this is their starting of their stepping stone goal and um, with the talent that's around, there's quite a few to come on in the supercars in the future. Time for the second and final race in the opening round of the Fujitsu Series and the grid for this one is the finishing order from race one. So Andrew Thompson will start from pole alongside Nick Perkat, Jack Perkins and Tim Blanchard on the second row of the grid. Taz Douglas, stunning job from the Victorian in that privateer Commodore and David Russell recovered to eighth. What can he do from there? Well, he has to stay out of trouble to start with. He's uh, really got to get up the front and get some points. He's lost out on a lot of points from the guys up the front. He needs to get them back today and have a really good race. Jay Vernick, the local driver, starting from 14th. Fellow Adelaide driver Adam Wallace from position 19. Todd Fiore back again with Triple F Racing. And the most experienced man in the series, Aaron McGill, starts towards the end. So, Perkat v Thompson, take two, race two on the streets of Adelaide. And this time, Perkat gets a better jump. He goes with the race one winner to the chicane, but it's Thompson who leads the way. Perkins files in the third. Chas Mostert launching off the curb. Perkat, though, looks racy. He wants to lead down at turn four, and he gets it. Well, we saw him do that in race one, so uh, he's obviously pulled that off two days in a row. Someone just went arrowing down the escape road, but Perkat has jumped. He's got Thompson, look at Jason Richards, up the inside on his key teammate, Daniel Gillison, we right on board with Jack Perkins in the Sonic Ford. Right in behind Andrew Thompson, the run to turn eight on lap one. And the young South Aussie kid, Nick Perkat, has his nose in front. We ride on board with Tim Blanchard, the Jayco Ford. And this is Richards launching a move on McLaughlin, so the experienced Kiwi goes past the young gun Kiwi. <laughs> He's actually looking quite racy today, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he progresses through the field today. You know, He's got to pass, I guess, the easier guys to pass. Now you've got the guns, so it's going to be a lot tougher for him. It's actually a car that he drove for the Tasman team back in 2007. It's been around. Perkat launching this move. He wanted to get it done as soon as possible and not let Thompson get away. I think Nick actually knows Andrew Thompson's got a very fast car there. Although you can see him pulling away a little bit on the first couple of laps here. Andrew's car really comes on strong mid-race towards the end. So he wants to try to get in front of him. And if he is faster, just try to hold him back for the rest of the race. The car that Perkat's driving is prepared by Walkinshaw Racing, it's an ex 
HRT chassis that won Bathurst in 09 with Will Davison and Garth Tanner at the helm. So it's got some very, very good pedigree, but Thompson is looking speedy. Actually, in the background here, Dave Russell. You can just see the front of the spoiler is just hanging off on the left-hand front. He must have come in contact with somebody in these first opening laps. So the early round blues are happening again. Last year, Russell's championship was a bit slow getting going, and he's found himself in a bit more grief. Hope that spoiler stays together. We jump on board with Blanchard. Runner-up last year, former Australian Formula 4 champ. You can see Andrew now. Tyres are just starting to come up to pressure. He's got the lights on. I think he knows that he's going to have to attack Nick very, very hard to get past. Um, but Nick's not going to make it easy for him. And having said that, right behind him is Jack Perkins. A triple eight Holden and a triple eight Ford right behind him. Love hearing the cars on the run to turn eight. Back with Blanchard as he looks at Jack Perkins. The car that Blanchard's driving is an X4 Performance Racing chassis. So all of these cars have great history in the V8 Supercars Championship. Perkins had to take a lot of curb because he was in and locked the left front and that running wide into the fence. Just a little bit too much speed in there for Jack. Had to take a lot of curb. Was very lucky. Very lucky not to, uh, to end up in those tyres on the outside of the wall. There will be some damage on the right-hand side of that car. You can already see his right, right mirror missing. So he's going to have his work cut out for him to hold back David Russell behind him. Blanchard, Perkins, Russell, Taz Douglas is going with them. And have a look who is coming. Jason Richards in the Greg Murphy Racing Commodore is just slowly but surely picking them off one by one. And that's what Russell does. That spoiler problem doesn't seem to be so bad. It's, it's not rubbing on the ground. Thank you, Frank. Okay. Oh, black no. Confirm. It's going to be called to pit lane. He's just been given the mechanical black flag. So David Russell needs to come to pit lane and get that front spoiler fastened and adjusted and make sure that it's not rubbing on the ground. Jeff Emery in problem at turn four. Jeff's got some damage on the back there. I reckon what's happened there is he's probably gone in a little bit hot and spun it, backed it into the fence. Back to the front. Perk out of Thompson. Just clearing away. Remember that David Russell has to come to pit lane. Jack's remember, got a problem. Yeah, remember Perkins dinged the wall just through this part of the circuit last time around. So, oh, you can see the damage on the right-hand side of that. All that orange paint you'll see here on the right-hand side. This is the replay of Jeff Emery lunging his teammate Tony Bates and not making it around the corner. Yeah, I think the camera's going to cop a small hit here. Maybe a large hit. And this is the replay with Perkins. Just locked it up on the way in. Just deflects that tyre bundle, but it causes damage to the front spoiler and leaves a big witness mark all the way down the door. It does. Andrew Thompson here really pushing hard now. They've just streeted away from the guys from third place back. Of course, Perkat is a local, even though he lives in Melbourne now, to be closer to... The Wall Control Workshop. He's very much an Adelaide lad. He's got Eric Pender as his engineer this year. But he's coming under massive pressure. Thompson now having a look in a 14. Perkat closes the door. It's side by side. Down the front straight. Thompson with his nose in front, but he's on the wrong side. This is not going to uh, bear well for Thompson down here. Perkat's pushed him wide. Still got the line for the chicane here. Thompson's going to have to do all his work again. It looks like Perkett is using more of this car to achieve the speed as Thompson now lunges at turn four in the gap. And the monster Commodore goes through the lead. Perkett, though, looks for the inside line down the inside. Oh! And he's bumped the back of Thompson and sends him around. And that will be looked at, no doubt. I would be very surprised if Nick doesn't cop a drive-through penalty for that. Really, that, uh, that pass wasn't on. Thompson got down his inside, fair and square. Now he's got damage on the left rear car, where it backed into the fence. So Thompson's going to have to come into the pits as well. You don't want a left rear tyre blowing halfway through turn eight, let me tell you. So they're going to play that safe. Let's have a look. Thompson, remember, got the move. Perkat tries to re-lunge. He knows he needs to get the spot back because Thompson will get away. And just a bit too impatient. 
very impatient. Andrew held his line there, didn't change his line. So, you know, I think Nick's... Oh, that was tight. Taz Douglas and Jack Perkins. Oh. And it's still on, and they're both in the fence. What are the boys doing? Well, we did say there was going to be some action on this race today. We didn't think there was going to be this much. It's only lap six. Now, that was the same place that Jack actually touched the fence earlier on. So that's now damage on the other side of the car. Jack's car is starting to look a little bit worse for wear. Taz there didn't really give him very much room on the outside, even though he did have right away in the corner. It looks dangerous, Jack. Back off, mate. It looks dangerous. And there's no doubt he's got to bring this car into pit lane. It is wounded. It is damaged. It is limping. McLaughlin goes on through. So plenty of action in this first round of the championship. Here's the game. Douglas on the inside and then it gets to the point here where Jack's got no road left. Yeah, Taz just squeezes him for room. No racing room there for two cars and uh, invitably that's what's going to happen. We've seen plenty of crashes when cars try to run too wide through this corner. That was, that was the first pump. To car triple two for a driving infringement on car 80. Oh, this is big. This is from race control. Nick Perkat is picking up a pit lane penalty for that contact with Andrew Thompson. We see again from this angle the reason why Taz Douglas has ended up in the fence. Plenty of action in this first round of the Fuji 2 Series in Adelaide. More when we come back. with the final race in the Fujitsu V8 Supercar Series. And while we are away, Jason Richards took the lead. The reason is because Nick Perkett, our leader in the Coats Hire Commodore, took his drive through penalty. Now that dropped him back down the order. And he had to lunge a move on Chaz Moster to get his way back up to position five. But out of it all, Jason Richards is the leader. The Kiwi started position 12. He's driven away from Tim Blanchard, who's now under fire from the 17-year-old Scott McLaughlin. He is. Scott's doing a great job. And you can see Nick Perkett gaining on both of them behind there after his pit lane penalty. So it's going to be a very interesting end of the race. You know, we're on lap 17 of 24. There's still a long way to go here. Let's just hope Jason can put, a, get, put together another six or seven perfect laps and uh, finish a fairy tale. This was a last minute deal. He got a phone call from Kevin Murphy while he was, he was in Sydney early in the week. He's been so busy dealing with this very rare form of cancer that he's fighting. And he's driving away from the kids, Blanchard and McLaughlin. Perkat though, watch for him. He'll be coming and he will be furious. Scott McLaughlin. Great run through turn eight here, down the inside of Blanchard. This is for second. Great move. So the Kiwis are charging today. McLaughlin is through. And you just can't help be impressed by this kid. He works as an apprentice at the Stone Brothers Workshop. He's learning the craft, he's learning the trade. And he doesn't seem to make the same mistake twice. He keeps learning. That's what you've got to do in this series, you know. Burkett muscling Blanchard, and Tim probably didn't establish himself too much there. Nick was going to put the nose in no matter what. Now, I've got a feeling none of these guys is going to give up down here. Down into the chicane. Turning oh, in. this is oh. tight. Burkett goes launching through the chicane, but still gets the spot. He's just got to calm it down. He's just got to knock it off an edge, Nick Burkett. He's clearly fast, but he's just getting in fights when he doesn't need to all the time. You've got to pick your battle. Oh, to make up that position, I knew Nick was faster and he was going to make the pass, but that could, uh, could have gone either way. Could have ended up in the wall with the wrecked car. Luckily, he got, got past him. Let's have a look again. Blanchard holds the inside line. Perkat went in deeper and he just drove it straight out through the other side. Now, if you're wondering, as we see again, Perkat, yes, he has his nose in front, but he's not on the racing line. That shot before the in-car shot here. Not much room there. Nick, they're both very, very lucky that they didn't end up both into the fence. Um, that second shot there that we saw really showed how fast these cars are doing in this narrow part of the circuit. And, uh, you know, a few years ago, we saw a huge ute crash, and they don't go as quick as these cars. So very, very lucky, those two. 
Jason Richards here started from position 12, but all the young guns have just self-imploded today. He's picked his way through. They've been getting him comfortable with this car, which is quite different in the way it feels to his regular BOC Commodore. Here's his young teammate, Daniel Jellison, the young Kiwi for the Greg Murphy Racing Squad. Jack Perkins is back on the road, but he's a couple of laps down with damage on that machine. But this is just stunning. Jason Richards has not raced a V8 supercar since November last year. Remember, it was just after Tasmania at Simmons Plains where his condition was diagnosed. He had an operation to remove a tumour. And this, this is what he's saying. This is mental therapy. All the other stuff that's going on, that's all the physical stuff. But if I'm in a race car, all the other stuff doesn't matter. You know, it's, and it's good to see, you know, you really need that sort of positive attitude, certainly to get through what Jason's going through at the moment. I know he wasn't happy with the race one. He wasn't happy with the setup. Obviously, they've worked hard on it overnight. The car is much better in today's race. He's kept it clean, stayed out of all the carnage that's been going on, and he's found himself, you know, with a good three or four second lead. And how's this for a bit of a strange one? Percat has got his way back to third, and that's enough for him to still win the round, even though he had a drive-through penalty. It just goes to show he never stopped trying, you know. He's uh, had a bit lane penalty, he's still going to finish third, win the round. That's all he's coming for this weekend. Tim Blanchard is hanging on. He runs in position four. But Jason Richards leads the way, the run home on the streets of Adelaide when we come back. Streets of Adelaide, we're on the run home in the final race of the Fujitsu V8 Supercar Series on the streets of Adelaide. Jason Richards leads the way. He's just three laps away from what will be a fairy tale win. Nick Perkett here just trying to negotiate some of the lap traffic, really pushing hard to get that second spot off Scotty McLaughlin. But Scotty's doing a fantastic job. Nick's actually having dramas catching him here, so. Uh, He's going to have his work cut out with three and two and a half laps to go. Remember, at this late stage of the weekend, the tyres are starting to go away in the Fujitsu series. They've got two sets of tyres for qualifying and then all of the races. But even if Perkat six where he is, he'll win the round, which is quite amazing, considering he won't have won a race. <laughs> well, to start the year off, you obviously always want to be winning races and finish up the weekend in the lead of the championship, and that's what Nick's going to do if he stays here at P3, but uh, you can tell he's pretty rolled up, fired up. He's had a bit of contact with a few cars, and he desperately wants this win, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna happen today. And if you're wondering, Andrew Thompson is back on the road, but the Monster Commodore is 18th in the race, so that really hurts his championship chances, but Perkat on target. He was one of the really great young guns last year in his first year of the series. Former Formula Ford champion, pedigree, is certainly proof that he's got what it takes. Of course, the championship goes to Perth for the next round, the first time we've ever gone to Western Australia. But right now, there are so many wonderful stories. Jason Richards leading the way in his comeback drive. Scott McLaughlin, the teenager from the Gold Coast, originally from New Zealand, who is doing a wonderful job. And Perkat, who really looks like he's put a stake in the ground this weekend. He's been really aggressive. He's really setting the tone for the year. I think it's going to be a pretty exciting year. You know, Nick's aggressive. I know Andrew Thompson's going to come out firing the next round. Jack Perkins is always there or thereabouts. You know, same with Dave Russell. You saw the fireworks that he had earlier on in race one. Now, this is Ashley Walsh in pit lane, and this is a pit lane penalty for overuse of the curbs at the turn one, two, three chicane. So the system's been the same as in the main game. He's had a fourth misdemeanor, so therefore has been given a pit lane penalty, but Perkett's not backing off here. He's going to bring this thing home to the line as the round winner, but he's going to be pretty keen to try to snatch second. He wants every point he can get, you know, especially while Andrew Thompson's lane fishing around an 18th spot. So, you know, with all the contact and things, these cars aren't overly susceptible to damage, but, you know, you start rubbing tyres and that sort of stuff with people, you know, Nick's actually lucky that he hasn't got a flat tyre or some other damage. Three kilometres of racing left to go for Jason Richards. On his way through the centre chicane, this was a last-minute deal. It's a one-off drive. He won't be doing the championship, 
He said, look, I love driving V8 supercars, but my focus has got to be on my treatment. This just managed to fit in the calendar and it puts a smile on my face. And I tell you what, looking out of the commentary box, the grandstand is pumping. The people are standing on their feet to bring him home. But they are, that's, you know, I'm really praying that he gets home too, you know. Obviously the car's a lot faster today. He's six tenths of a second faster in his fastest lap today than he was yesterday. So they've obviously tuned that thing up pretty good overnight, but uh, all credit to him. He's stayed out of trouble. He's there, he's at the front, and uh, you know, hopefully going to win this race. It's his first weekend in the Fujitsu Series. He's been a main game regular for the last decade. You will not find a more popular guy in pit lane. I dare say, this will be probably the most popular win of the weekend. Oh, it doesn't matter who wins the Clipsal 500. This one is a win for the ages. He's doing it tough, Jason Richards, but there will be a smile on his dial. You are a star, JR. And Richards will win on the streets of Adelaide. The fans love it, we love it, he loves it. That's a special one. And the fans show their appreciation. Jason Richards takes race two of the weekend. That places him fourth overall for the round. But forget the numbers, forget the stats. It just means so much more. What a great job. That car has not got a mark on it after all the drama that we had throughout the day today. Young blokes could learn a lesson from JR. Percat 30 wins the round from Tim Blanchard. Great job, Daniel Jellison in fifth from Chas Mostert. David Wall played himself in, got up to the top 10. Struggle of a weekend for David Russell. He was 13th, but the story of the day is Jason Richards. He takes race two. What a fitting end, you know, but uh, that's my last drive for the weekend here and um, couldn't have really done it much better, could we? Uh, the car was uh, a lot better than yesterday. You struggled really a lot yesterday and uh, had a great uh, run and got to thank Kevin Murphy and the team from GMR for letting it happen. Clearly Team BIC, you know, they've been right behind me through this terrible period of my life. My family, my friends, all my sponsors, you know, and P. Edwards also in the Ferrari. So, because this is, this is treatment for me and no better way than you do it with a win in a race. Couldn't say it any better myself. Nick Perkett leads the way, 27 points clear of Tim Blanchard. Scott McLaughlin third. Andrew Thompson salvages fifth on a tough weekend because it was this contact with Nick Perkett that's got a lot of tongues wagging in pit lane. That penalty, was it fair? Um, yeah, I think it was fair. Um, he roughed me up a bit down there and I did it the other end and yeah, I got the drive through penalty. Unfortunate, I would have preferred to have a clean race with him, but um, I had to drive it very hard and use a lot of the tyre to get back to where I was and at the end that's why I just had to cruise and try and have some tyres for Perth. And how does it feel now it's all done? Uh, it's awesome to have my first round win and a podium in the one weekend. Would like a race win, that would be really good but I'm making it hard for myself but I'm sure with the, the speed of this coat tyre car we're going to be up there all year. And the next round of the championship takes us to the Wild West for the first time. The Fujitsu Series goes to Barbagallo Raceway from April 29 to May 1. The next event in the V8 Supercars Championship, the ITM 400 from the streets of Hamilton, April 16 and 17 from New Zealand next weekend. So Perkett takes his first round win. Scott McLaughlin on the podium for the first time too. And Tim Blanchard starts off the year in style. Thanks to Stephen Johnson and the whole crew. I'm Aaron Noonan. We'll see you next time.